Hey everybody, welcome back to Podcastage. My name's Bandrew and I'm back with another microphone test video for you guys. Anyways, today I am testing out this guy. This is the Audio Technica ATR2500 USB, as requested by our viewer, Olavo Santana. Santana, can you believe it? We got a microphone request from Santana. This is a USB condenser microphone with a headphone port on it. And as per usual, if you are interested in this microphone, I'll throw a link in the video description down below and it'll set you back about 70 bucks. So let's talk about what you get in the box. You get the microphone, you get the microphone mount, you get maybe a five foot USB cable, and you get a cheap plastic microphone stand. Look at this, it even comes with a freaking lifetime warranty. So the build quality on this one is not the best. It is a metal body with a metal grill, all that stuff, which feels nice, but the plastic components on it feel kind of cheap. So here's the actual front of the microphone. These are the plastic components that I don't think feel very good. Um, at the very bottom is the headphone port, which actually provides live monitoring with zero latency. Directly above that, you have a headphone volume up and down. And then directly above that, you have a blue LED light to say, I'm on. So a big complaint I have is actually the microphone mount that is provided. And it's basically that I hate these microphone mounts. And it's because it provides no shock absorption. So if I hit the microphone stand like that on accident, you hear every single second of it. It just sounds like a big boom. So I hate this kind of, sh uh, of microphone mount because of that. Also, the fact that it comes with a tabletop microphone stand and this kind of microphone mount, if you have this sitting on the desk that you're typing on or clicking with your mouse or hitting hitting your desk, it's gonna pick up every single bump and it's gonna sound horrible. So of course I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that sounds like a little bit later. The frequency response of the mic is 30 hertz to 15 kilohertz, which is, it seems pretty nice to me. It sounds fairly full. It doesn't feel like it's missing any big frequency gaps. Here is what the frequency response and the polar pattern graph look like. And we'll go ahead and test out the polar pattern, which is a cardio pattern okay so now I am moving around the microphone as you can hear as I get around the back it just picks up a lot of the low end um, as I move around to the side it picks it up about 180 degrees in front of it and then the frequency response just drops off drastically around the back okay right now I am about one foot away from the microphone now I'm about two maybe two and a half feet away from the microphone now I'm maybe four or five feet away from the microphone and no I'm not wearing any shoes why the hell would I wear shoes I'm in my apartment get off my back songs to test the microphones yes I am I'm singing stupid songs Okay, now I am banging on the keyboard directly behind the microphone as I speak into it to see how much of my voice it picks up versus how much of the keyboard sound it picks up. Okay, so now the microphone is on the tabletop microphone stand. I'm gonna place it down and type on my keyboard so you can hear what kind of shocks this thing picks up. Okay, now I'm gonna shut up and let you hear the background noise this thing generates at the gain that I'm using it at, and then I'm gonna crank the gain and show you how it sounds. So I think this microphone sounds pretty dang awesome. It has slightly better presence than the ATR2100, but that's what you would expect because this is a condenser microphone and the ATR2100 USB is a dynamic microphone. I thought the acoustic sounded great, the electric sounded decent, and the voice sounds pretty good as well. I would just recommend getting something like the $6 Dragon Pad Pop filter. But with all that being said, I would still recommend the ATR2100 over this microphone for a couple reasons. It's slightly cheaper, it has all the same functionality. It sounds pretty comparable, a little bit worse, but still it's relatively, it's in the same ballpark. And lastly, the ATR2100 provides the ability to expand to the XLR port. But if you have no desire to expand from USB to XLR microphone, then I think this is a perfectly fine option. I just like the ability of the ATR2100 to expand to that if you have that desire in the future. But if you don't, 
this is a great microphone and it sounds pretty dang awesome. And as I say on every USB microphone, I would love if it had an actual microphone gain control on the microphone, like the Blue Yeti or something like that. But it sounds pretty good without it and I'm able to control the gain on my computer relatively well. All right, well, I guess that will do it. If you do have any more questions about this microphone, leave them in the comments down below and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. If you are interested in the microphone, I'll leave a link in the video description down below as well. Don't forget to follow me on all the social media stuff in the video description. Also, vote for the microphones you want reviewed next, which is also linked in the video description. And if you don't see the microphone on the poll, leave it in the comments and I'll add it. And lastly, if you found the video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you thought it sucked, give me a big old thumbs down. And if you want more, click subscribe by clicking the logo in the corner. And I will see you all later. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.